Should we pray the Tarawih prayer and then take a break and then come back to pray the Hajjid prayer as you see people doing, especially in the last 10 nights of Ramadan? In my opinion, actually no. I believe that this act is against the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I know it's very popular today, I know a lot of people enjoy it, a lot of people benefit from it, or what they think they're benefiting from it, but with me, I'll be honest with you, uh, the Sunnah is more beloved to me. I am definitely of the opinion that this is something which is a, uh, a new matter that's not from the Sunnah. And uh, that's all you need to know for the people who are the TL, DR generation, the millennials who ain't got the patience to actually carry on. For those who do want to carry on, this is going to be a unique Faith IQ video. This is going to be the longest and I want to go into a little bit of detail in this mas'ala, in this issue, because it's a controversial one. Okay, all jokes aside, this is a very uh, sensitive issue to a lot of people because you see, on one side you've got people saying, how dare you say that it's yani bid'a or something that it's new or whatever. And I'm not saying it's haram to pray this because there are major ulama that allow this prayer and even encourage it. That's what's caused the problem. But as I'm going to present to you now, I find it strange and I, 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 I'm not happy with it, to be honest. And you'll see that a number of scholars aren't. And here's my justification. Now, first of all, let's deal with the people who say they should be prayed. They say, what's the problem? The, the, the Prophet ﷺ said that the prayer of the night is methna, methna. It's in two units, two units. So a person can pray as long as they want. And the prayer that is established is called taraweeh, and that's about prayer breaks. And so what if we take a really long break in between? And there's a narration of Anas that said that they are only doing that which they are hoping for good for, and so on and so forth. And our intention is only to pray, or what am I doing, you know. And so let's start from the top. Let's first of all deconstruct the last few arguments. First of all, Anas' statement is weak. Secondly, the principle that let's just, just do, you know, this, I'm praising Allah, whatever, then that's all bid'ah and justified. Everyone sits there going, you know, Allahu, Allahu, blah, 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 making up their own nonsense and thinking they're being rewarded. There has to be a principle. The Prophet ﷺ said that whoever does an action that's not from our actions, then it will be rejected. So the concept of the bid'ah needs to be respected. But let's now take it back and try to understand this issue of whether this falls into the category of a night prayer. And I'm going to give you some history. Uh, now, I want you to remember that the Nafil prayers, the super derogatory, non-obligatory prayers, in principle, these are prayers that are prayed alone at all times. The Prophet ﷺ, when he used to pray the night prayer, never used to congregate the people and never used to announce it. And even his family, he never used to pray with. He used to pray alone. He would take a break, go to sleep, he would wake up, and that would be his norm. And then in Ramadan, and then especially in the last 10 nights, he would then take it to the next level. So he wouldn't go, he wouldn't go to sleep. And then he would also then awake his family. What does that prove? Number one, that he's praying by himself because normally, because now he's waking his family to pray, so that would mean that he didn't have his family with him. And number two, that he's now spending the whole night, meaning now that it's a long, elongated prayer, especially in Ramadan. It's more effort required, it's more difficult, but it's worth it for Ramadan. Which indicates to you that every an incident that we have in the Sunnah of the Prophet and praying with someone else was only yani, uh, a janak, you know, Fajatan, only because it happened. Like the famous hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas where he took him from the left-hand side and turned into his right when he was praying to Hajjat. That was only because he was staying at the house. And otherwise, he didn't uh, advertise that fact. We don't see him calling out afterwards. The hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Likewise, when he went and prayed with Anas and his mother. Likewise, these are one-offs. That was not the norm of the Prophet Sallallahu We have the hadith of Aisha that when, he, when she woke up in the middle of night and in the dark looking for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi she felt his foot and he was praying. The night prayers prayed alone. And even in Ramadan, this idea of Taraweeh, I'm just going to give you some, some pointers here. First of all, Taraweeh has never been called that. That was a later name. The name is Qiyam. Uh, uh, whoever spends the night in prayer of Ramadan, then you know Iman and Ihtisab and then his sins will be forgiven. So it's Qiyamul Layl we're talking about. And the Prophet ﷺ for the first three nights in that famous hadith, when he would come, come out each night and he led the people in this night Qiyam, the first night, then the second night more people, third night more people, and the fourth night the masjid was overflowing and he didn't come out. Until the morning time, Fajr. Now I want you to imagine the people were sitting there waiting until Fajr all night because actually they were expecting the night prayer to be that long. One prayer to not last all the way. And they would only be praying eight rak'ah in the first three nights. And that's very hard upon people to stand for five, six hours in only eight rak'ah. A lot of standing. And that's also why later on the units were increased so that you know people can break up by going up and down, up and down. It makes it easier. Anyway. The Prophet ﷺ, he came out of Fajr and he goes, you know what, I knew that you guys were all sitting here, but I didn't come out on purpose so that this prayer doesn't become obligatory upon you. And that's so important to understand. It's the obligatory prayers that are congregational. The, the Sunnah prayer is actually in principle a quiet one, a private one, an individual one, a hidden one, a one that's prayed in the home and not in the mosques. That's the norm that we should be uh, uh, following. And what's amazing 
is that the rest of the month the Prophet Sallallahu then carried on praying by himself and the companions carried on praying by themselves. There was no Qiyamul Layl in congregation, neither then in the time of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq and neither in the time of Sayyidina Umar until the end of his Khilafah when he started to see the people you know, making these little congregations in the masjid, a little bit here, little there, this, that, whatever. He then said, you know what, I'm going to gather these people together, put them under the Imamah of uh, Ubay bin Ka'ab who's awesome, the best Qari or whatever, and let's use him to, 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 to lead the people. And the Prophet Sallallahu has given him permission to do that because the Prophet ﷺ also said to us for those people who are not very good with the Quran and don't have the confidence to pray by themselves that uh, whoever prays with the Imam until the, 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 the Imam leaves then he will be written for having prayed the whole night anyway and so that's what our aim should be to actually stick with the Imam if we pray with an Imam and other than that you want to then pray by yourself pray by yourself now let's now talk about this in, in this, so, so what have you learned? You've learned that the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ was not actually a congregational prayer, but he allowed it. And it was then Umar that established it as a congregational prayer. Every night of, of the Ramadan, he called it Taraweeh because he increased the units to make it easier for the people so you can go up and down. And he would still keep it very long, hours. And in between each uh, couple of units, there would be a Raha. And that's why the prayer was called Taraweeh. So there would be a break, a relaxation, whatever. So. Uh, people today they are arguing all the time about units 36, 48, 20, this is better. It's nothing about that. It's about praying as long as possible, as high quality as possible, and making it relaxed. Now you know that over the time people start becoming lazy, start people becoming tired, they're not very connected, and so the, 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 the units decrease, the time decreases, and people are trying to make things easier. And the, the new ideas came in. One of our teachers, Sheikh Atiyah Salim, alayhi rahmatullah, he is a Qadi of Medina, and he told us specifically that in the Masjid Nabawi, 800 years, there was only one uh, single prayer that differed in units, sometimes 20, sometimes 36, but it would last all night. No breaks, no nothing. I want you to know, by the way, that in the chapters of fiqh, this is not called taraweeh tahajjud or taraweeh qiyam. The, the, you know, you pray with the imam, then you go, and then sometimes you pray with the rhythm and you don't, and then you come back later. This is called the issue of ta'aqib. Ta'aqib. And ta'aqib, okay, as, as Ibn Qudama and Ibn Athir said, they said that it's a nafil prayer that follows taraweeh whether the witr has been prayed or not. So the norm is what happens these days. Person goes to the masjid with the imam and sometimes the imam's uh, you know, locked on and he doesn't pray witr because he knows they're going to come back later. And sometimes he does pray witr because he knows people are not going to come back. And then the person who's, uh, who's then in that congregation, they either pray the witr with the imam or they pray the witr of the imam and they add another rak'ah to keep it even or they just yani, walk out, they don't pray the witr because they know they want to come back again. So I want to say to you, this coming back again was not the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, neither of the companions, neither of the tabi'een, Sufyan the Imam of Tabi'in, he, what did he say? He said, this is bid'ah, muhdath, this is. This is something new and invented. Sa'id ibn Jubair used to say, this is makro. Uh, 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 Al-Hasan al-Basri didn't like it. Uh, Imam Ahmad in one narration. It's true, the Hanbalis themselves as a madhab, they consider this, this prayer to be allowed. But if you look at the majority of the companions, this coming back to pray again, it doesn't make sense. Not only is it going against the idea that, um, uh, especially if the Imam has prayed witr, one shouldn't intentionally be setting up a jama'ah. Now, I just want to say that if you pray witr, with an Imam. If you want to pray the rest of the night, what you should do, okay, let me actually finish off the, the, what Sheikh Atiyah said. 800 years, one prayer. And then for two, 300 years then, there was an approach yani, by the Imams to, to keep the Sunnah alive of 20 rak'ah of Imam uh, of Omar and to keep the Sunnah of or the, the opinion of the Malikiyah, who were the dominant madhab, alive of 36 rak'ah. So how did they achieve this? They said, we'll pray 36 in two, two parts. They would pray 20 first of all, then they would come back and pray another 16 in the latter part of the night. You can call that Taraweeh and Tahajjud. And then they would pray the three raka'ah witr. And that, can, that continued for a number of years. And then for about 200 years ago, a lot of Imams all got involved with different madhabs and it was chaos and everyone was praying this, that, whatever, until the house of Sa'ud took over in the last 100 years. What did they do? They said, enough of that. We only have one Imam. He's going to pray 20 raka'ah in the first part and then he's going to come back and pray 10 and they pray 30 with three raka'ah witr. So 33, where that number comes from, no idea. But it doesn't matter because the numbers are uh, relative. But this pro process of making two prayers, that has stuck until today in Medina and, and, uh, and Haram, in Mecca, that, that carries on today. I want to say to you, this is not the Sunnah. As Imam Abu Hanifa said, as Imam Ahmad in one narration, as, as uh, uh, 
even Sheikh Uthameen who was asked this question as well. If a person wants to go and pray, okay, more after the Imam, first of all, he shouldn't. He should trust in the Hadith. The Prophet said, if you pray with the Imam and you finish the witr with him, then you've got the whole night anyway. But let's say you want to pray, then pray by yourself. The night prayer is meant to be in principle by yourself. The Prophet I want you to see that even though he went back in again, he didn't, he didn't come establish the Jama'ah again. It carries on by yourself. So you pray by yourself, quietly, no problem. And if you need to pray the witr, it's not a disaster. You know, a number of scholars allow a person to pray witr prayer with the Imam and then pray uh, extra uh, nafil by themselves later on if they get the opportunity. You know, suddenly they are awake and they want to pray. We're not going to say don't pray. Sufyan so al-Thawri allowed that Abdullah ibn Mubarak, Imam Malik, uh, Ahl Kufa, Imam Ahmed, Abu Isa, Abu Isa Tirmidhi, no, Abu Isa this, Abu Isa as well, and Abu Isa Imam Tirmidhi as well, a number of scholars. And that's because the hadith that talks about witr, that says there are no two witr, so don't pray to witr twice, but the other hadith says make their witr your final prayer. But it doesn't say don't pray after witr. So if you do pray with her, and that's the final prayer of what you thought was a night prayer, so then later on an opportunity comes to pray because you want to pray, then fine. Any people who know the Quran, they shouldn't even be praying with a jama'ah, they should be praying themselves. But for the masses, okay, taraweeh is very good to go. They get the imam, uh, the reward of praying with the imam, and they get an opportunity to pray later as well. That's what they should try to do. But I don't like this practice. I'm not going to say it's haram, because a number of ulama allowed it, and you know we can't go up against that. But am I clear that it's the position of the majority of the companions? It's a sunnah of the Prophet to only pray one prayer as long as possible? Definitely, and Allah knows best.